Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So this is another video from the Stripers A to Z DSA course. Just in case you're for the first time here, this is world's most in-depth course when it comes to DS algo. Why do I say that? Because this course has 456 modules. By the end of the course, you would have solved more than 400 plus problems when it comes to DS algo. You can go across the entire internet. You can buy any of the paid courses in the market. None of them will be teaching you DS algo in such step. One thing that I can give you as assurance is if you complete this particular course, you can clear any of the DS algo rounds in any of the companies in any part of the world. So till now we have uh, covered uh, till this particular problem. In this video, I'll be covering the next permutation problem. So what does the problem next permutation state? It states that you'll be given an array of integers. It can be repetitive integers as well. Now you have to find the next permutation of this particular array. But in order to understand next permutation, what you need to first understand is what is permutation? Now you're given an array and the array is containing integers. Over here, there are three integers. Now these three integers can be rearranged in themselves. Now imagine if I rearrange 3, 1, 2, can I write them as 1, 2, 3? I can. If I bring the 1 to the first place, if I bring the 2 to the second place, if I bring the 3 to the third place, I can write them as 1, 2, 3. I can also rearrange 3, 1, 2 and write it as 3, 2, 1. I can also rearrange 3, 1, 2 and write it as 2, 1, 3. So if I ask you, how many possible rearrangements are possible? It'll be like, for 3, 1, 2, since there are 3 numbers, 3 factorial, very basic maths, 6 possible ways, I can rearrange them in 6 possible ways. Now, all of these ways are called permutation. Now, the question is asking you to find the next permutation. Now, what does next permutation means? When I say permutation, all the possible ways, all the possible ways have to be written in the sorted order. So, if you see 1, 2, 3 is before 1, 3, 2. Now, what do you mean by sorted order? If you go to the dictionary, can I say 1, 2, 3 will always be smaller than 1, 3, 2. 1, 3, 2 will always be smaller than 2, 1, 3. Dictionary order because 1, 2, 3, like 1, 2, 3 is smaller than 1, 3, 2. So, you have to write them in dictionary order, in the sorted order, ascending way. Now, you have to find where is 3, 1, 2. Can I say 3, 1, 2 appears here? It does in the sorted permutation. Now, you have to find the next permutation after 3, 1, 2. And the next permutation is 3, 2, 1. So the answer to this that you have to return will be 3, 2, 1. Yes, this is what you have to return as an answer. Now you might be thinking of a possible edge case. What if the array was given as 3, 2, 1? So can I say for 3, 2, 1, these will be the possible permutations. But if I have to write the next permutation, 3, 2, 1 lies over here. And if I carefully observe there is no one after 3 to 1. So what will be the next? Because there is no one. In such cases, you will fall back to the first possible rearrangement in the sorted order. Hence, the answer will be 1, 2, 3. If there is no one after this particular arrangement, you will fall back to the first and the answer will be 1, 2, 3. If this question comes up in an interview, the first solution that you will tell the interviewer will be of brute force solution. Now, what is a brute force solution? It is generically doing what the problem states. Now, the problem was stating uh, to generate, like, if you normally think, it's basically generating all the permutations. So, I'll generate all the possible permutations. Once you've done that, can I say you'll get all of them? You will. Then you'll be like, where does 3, 1, 2 lie? And make sure you generate all of them in the sorted order. Then it is like, where does 3, 1, 2 lie? So, probably I can do a linear search. I can iterate and I can find that 3, 1, 2 lies over here. So do a linear search in order to find where does 3, 1, 2 lie. Once you've figured out where it lies, can I say the next index permutation, like this one, the next index permutation, this one, will be your answer. Yes, that will be my answer. If there doesn't exist a next, then the first one will be my answer. Can I say the brute force will be comprising of these three particular steps? Yes. But now you'll be thinking, but how do I generate all the possible permutations? In order to generate all the possible permutations, you'll be using recursion. And I've already made a couple of videos on it. So there are two approaches. If you see the lecture 12 and lecture 13 from the recursion playlist, you'll get to know how to generate all the possible permutations. Now in an interview, you just have to mention these steps. Usually in an interview, you don't have to. Because if you start coding the code for generating all the permutations in recursion, that will eat up a lot of time. That is why in an interview, you generally have to just say that 
this is what I'm thinking, generate all, do a linear search, and that's it. And that, that is when the interviewer will ask you, okay, what do you think will be the time complexity? I'm not diving deep into the time complexity. You'll find that in lecture 12 and lecture 13 of the recursion playlist. Let's just hypothetically analyze the time complexity. I know one thing, there are three numbers and there were three factorial, which is six possible permutations. So can I say if there are n numbers, there will be at minimum of n factorial, at minimum of n factorial permutations generated. And every every permutation is of n length. So can I say at minimum, I'm, I do not know the algorithm, at minimum, if I go across to generate all, I'll end up taking n factorial to generate all, and each one of them is of length n. So this is what I'll at minimum take, n factorial into n. And if I say, if I give you an array of length 5, n factorial is 120. If I give you an array of length 15, n factorial is near about 10 to the power 12, near about. Imagine the time it will take, 10 to the power 12 iterations. This is why this complexity is of extremely high order. And that is when you'll say that we will not be using it because it will end up taking a lot of time. So remember one thing, whenever you are in an interview, never ever deep dive into a brute force solution. Always tell it from a very higher level, like generate all linear search, the next will be my answer because that is what the interviewer wants uh, to listen. You should not start writing the code because that will end up wasting your time. Once you've told the steps on a very higher level, just tell him that this is going to take a time complexity of a very high order. That is why I'll try to optimize it. Now, does there exist a better solution? It doesn't like, there doesn't exist any better solution, but still for C++ user, you can say that I can use the STL library. So if you use the STL, there is an STL as next underscore permutation over which if you pass the list, it will automatically change the array to the next permuted array. Got it? And then you can return that as an answer. But this is an STL, which is an inbuilt function. Now the interviewer might ask you, can you please implement that inbuilt STL? Like I know there is an inbuilt next underscore permutation, but can you please implement it? And that is when you'll jump to the most optimal solution. If you're a Java or a Python user, what you can do is you can skip this part. If you're a C++ user, I'll highly recommend you to say this STL so that the interviewer gets an idea that you have a knowledge about STL as well. Okay, so time to understand the most optimal solution and knowing what happens behind that next underscore permutation in C++ STL. So the flow of the lecture will be first, some observation using this particular example, and then we build our intuition. Once you've done that, we move on to the algorithm and then we move on to uh, the dry run. Once you have done all the three steps, we move on to writing the code. So at any moment you feel like jumping over, you'll find the timestamps in the video and you can jump over. So before taking this example and doing some observations, for a moment, let's go into the English dictionary. And imagine, I've given you three words, Raj, Rax, RBX. Now we know one thing in English dictionary, Raj will appear before Rax and Rax will appear before RBX. Now, why does that happen? Now the pretty obvious answer is RA and RA matches. So, so there's a very long prefix that match. And then there is a difference of J and X. That is the reason RAX tends to appear after RAJ, not right after, but it appears after RAJ. And RBX appears after RAX, not before RAX. Because over here, just one, one character is matching. And that is the reason it doesn't appear in between. So something we have seen in dictionary is the next elements or next elements tends to have a longer prefix match. Tends to have a longer prefix match. So this is the first thing on which I'll start observing on the example that we have taken. So longer prefix match is what I'm looking for. Longer prefix match because I know the next elements tends to have a very longer prefix match. Now over here we know something. We don't have all like all the possible combos like if you go to an English dictionary, you'll find all the possible words. But over here, we are very restricted to these seven integers. So we cannot exactly say that what will be the next because we are restricted. We do not have everything in the world. So we know one thing, in order to get the longer prefix match, we have to kind of keep a very long prefix match. That is something we know from the English dictionary. So the first thing, 
If I try to match everything, what will we get? We will get the same array. So this is definitely not something which we'll do. But if I try to just match this much, what will happen? Two, one, five, four, three, zero. There's only one number left that I can rearrange and make something. I'll again get the same. So not possible. If I try to match all of them, it will be like two, one, two, one, five, four, three. So I have two numbers. If I had something other like nine, eight, I could have written 98, but we just have zero, zero, which we have to rearrange. So if I try to rearrange, this will stay constant because prefix match. If I try to rearrange zero, zero, it cannot at max be zero, zero. So the number, like the array still stays the same. Perfect. So we'll try to match four, maybe four is possible. Two, one, five, four. If I match four, I will have three numbers, three, zero, zero, which I can rearrange. I can probably put zero here and then three, zero. But this will be smaller. That's not possible. That's not possible. Maybe I can put 0, 0, 3. That's smaller. Whatever you try to do with these three numbers, you will not get anything that's bigger than that. So that is not possible. Maybe I can try to match 3. 2 and 5. 3 prefixes match. And then I have 4, 3, double 0. You can try out all combos. Like you can take 3, 4, double 0. Smaller. You can take... 4, 3, double, 0, same. You can take 0, 0, 4, 3, smaller. You can take 0, 4, 3, 0, smaller. No one is greater than this. So 3 prefix match is not possible. Okay. I'll try to make 2 prefix match. 2, 1. And now we have this. If I write the same, that will give me the same. Not possible. If I write 4, 5, 3, double, 0, not possible. If I write 3, 4, 5, double, 0, not possible. So... You can again try rearranging all the five numbers. You'll not get anything greater. And why Why is that happening? Because you have a five. You need someone greater than five. Hear me out properly again. You have five. In order to get greater by keeping two prefixes same, you need probably a six or seven over here in order to get greater. But that's not possible because among all the five numbers you have, among all the five numbers you have, no one is greater than five. So whatever you rearrange, will always be smaller. Two prefix matches, not possible. Can I just do one prefix match? Let's do this. Now I have one, five, four, three, double zero. Can I put something like five, four, three, one, double zero? I can. And can I say this is definitely after this. But is it right after this is my question. I can also have two, four, five, three, one, double zero. And this is also after this. But this one is before this. So I have to kind of find... What is right after this? So I know one thing. I'll have one prefix match. I will have one prefix match. Now there can be five over here. And then four, one, three, double, zero. There can be five, one, four, three, double, zero. There can be five, three, four, one, double, zero. There can be a lot of arrangements that you can make. A lot of arrangements that you can make. But can you write something like this? Zero, zero, four, five, three, one. You cannot because this zero is smaller than this. So this is not possible. So what is the thing that you have to take care? You're matching till here. This is where you're changing from. This is where you're changing from. So your target will be to get someone who's greater than one. Get someone who's greater than one. That is for sure. So who will be that greater guy? You, you, you want the next. You don't want the very, very next. Because if you take two five, it's way ahead. Because we, we can also take two four. We can also take 2, 3. Which one will you prefer taking? Will you prefer taking 2, 5? 2, 4? 2, 3? 2, 0 is out of question. 2, 0 is out of question. 2, 1 is out of question. Because 0 is smaller, 1 is smaller. Which one will you take? It'll be like someone who is greater than 1, but the smallest. So out of 3, 4, 5, who are greater than 1, who is the smallest? 3. So you'll end up taking 3. Got it? So this is the observation that I'm forming. This is the observation that I'm forming. So before going to the next set of observations, let's try to conclude on this first observation and try to build that algorithm that gives me that, okay, that's just one element of, probably gives me something out of this observation. So why was this not possible? Why was this not possible? The simple answer is we have four and we need someone greater than four. We need someone greater than four and no one out of these elements were greater than 4. And no one out of these elements were greater than 4. Thereby it was not possible. Thereby it was not possible. 
So I knew this. Why was 2-1 not possible? Because we need someone greater than 5 and there was no one greater than 5. But why was 2 possible? Because we had so many greater than 1. Something did you observe? 0. So we try to draw that graph. 0, 0, 3, 4 and then 5. So do you see a graph forming? And then there's one here. So there is a certain break point. There's a certain break point. And that's what you have to figure out. The break point. You have to figure out the break point. Why? Because if you everything is increasing. So you you have nothing on the right that's smaller. The moment you find the break point, you're sure that on the right of one, everything is smaller. So you have to figure out the break point. So what you'll do is you'll try to run a loop and you'll try to figure out the break point. So this will be your i and this will be your i plus one. And I can say the break point will be whenever a of i tends to be smaller than a of i plus one. Very simple observation. We need to figure out the break point. So the conclusion from the first set of observation is find the break point. Once you have done that, then let's move on to the next set of observation. What was the next set of observation? We say two will stay. But instead of one, whom did we take? Did we take five? Did we take four? Did we take three? Whom did we take? We did take three. Why? So, if you look at the right of one, now these two elements are smaller than one and these three elements are greater than one. Can I say this? And if you take five, it's far. If you take four, it's close. If you take three, it's further close. So, what did you try to take? You will try to take someone who is slightly greater than 1. So, so that's 3. So what you'll do is, since you know this is increasing, you know this is an increasing order, you'll start iterating. 0, are you greater than 1? 0, are you greater than 1? 3, oh 3, are you? You are greater. So I will take this 3 here. I will take this 3 here. That's what my observation is. Second one will be, find someone greater than 1. But the smallest one, but the smallest one, because you have to find greater than one. So three, four, five was greater, but you have to find the smallest so that you stay close, so that you stay close. So the observation is so that you stay close. Got it? So the second step is kind of clear. So I'll take three. I'll, I'll take three. And what I'll do shuttlely is, I'll, I've taken three, okay. So first two places are filled. Uh, what are we left with? We are left with, can I say 5, 4, 1 and double zero. These are the numbers that we are left with. 5, 4, 0, 0, 1. How would you like to place it on these places? Just think and tell me. Now can I say 2, 3 is now greater than 2, 1. 2, 3 is now greater than 2, 1. So what should be a third priority to keep this thing as small as possible? And how can you do this? How can you do this? It'll be like, now, since 2, 3 is greater than 2, 1, how you place them doesn't matter. But you need to keep it small. So, will you prefer placing it like this? Tell me, 0, 0, 1, 4, 5. Yes, because that will keep the number small. It's already greater here. So, I'll try to place in a sorted order. In a sorted order. So, try to place. Try to place remaining in sorted order. So this three observation, this three observation will build the intuition for the algorithm that I'm going to write. I hope you've got the intuition. Very simple. Try to get as long prefix match as possible. So I got the longest prefix match by finding the break. Next, once you've figured out the break point, after the longest prefix, try to put someone who is slightly greater than this perfect, this guy. And this was three in this case. So put, once you've made this, Greater, fill this out as small, as small, so that it's right next. Got the three intuitions or observations. Now it's time to think of the algorithm. So it is now time to design the algorithm on the basis of the three observations we did. And you know the intuitions behind these observations. So, coming to the first observation, find the longest prefix match. I know this much matched. And this was the breaking point, where... We increased 0, 3, 4, 5 and there was a dip over here. Can I say there was a dip over here? Because after 5, there was a smaller number 1. So, let's take an array like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
can I say if I've been given an array of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in this case, this is the smallest permutation. And the largest, like the last permutation will be this, can I say? And over here, if you see, there's an upward curve, like the numbers increase 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there's no dip. Why is there no dip? Because this is the last. So no prefix can, you can match. But over here, if you see, right here, right here, there's a dip. Yes. Because 5 is increasing, like 5 is the starting and there's a dip. Suddenly to 4. So the dip is here. Why? Because then you can say 1, 2, 3 will match. And the 5 and 4, you can just take someone greater than 4. You can just take someone greater than 4. So you have taken. That's why. But in a way you cannot. Thereby there was no dip. So there was a dip here. So which is the last index where you can have a dip? So it's like n minus 2 is the last index where you can have a dip. Where you can have a dip. I can say that. So what you'll say is, the first step is very short. Find out this particular index. Find out this particular index. So you can say that for i is equal to n minus 2, i greater than 0, i minus minus. If at any moment array of i comes down to be a dip value, then you can say index, can you store the value of i and can you break down? And what you can do is you can keep the initial index as maybe minus 1. And if it is minus 1, if it is minus 1, then you don't need to do anything. You can say that this particular array is your answer. You can just reverse this particular array and that will be your answer. If you see, if there is no dip, then this is the, like, lexicographically the biggest one. So you just reverse it, you'll get your answer. So that is a very simple algorithm. If there is no dip, which means index is minus 1, then you just reverse the array and that will be your answer. So this is the edge case that you have to take care. Whenever the given array is the last one. Okay, now, so we have our index pointed here. What, so I can say I've, I've done the first observation. What is the second? Find out someone greater than one, but the smallest of that, like someone greater than one, five is greater, four is greater, three is greater. But you need someone who's the smallest but greater than one. Smallest but greater than one. So it'll be like 0, 0, 3, 4, 5. So there's an increasing curve. So you can start from the back. 0, are you greater? 0, are you greater? 3, are you greater? He says, yeah, I'm, yes, I'm greater. So I'll be like, cool, do that. So what you'll do is you'll find this greater and you'll swap it. You will swap it. Why swap? I'll tell you. You just swap it. Swap. Done. So I'll go across and say, i is equal to n minus 1. And I can go on till the index the breakpoint and I can go on like this and if array of i is greater than array of the breakpoint which is index you will say can you please swap array of i and array of index once you have done that can you please break and this will be under the if and the for loop ends quite simple now I have swapped it so after swapping 1 will come here 3 will go here why did I swap? I'll tell you. So the second point is also done. So I can say 2, 3 got placed. 2, 3 got placed in the current column. What about the next? Previously it was 2, 1. So now we have 2, 3. 2, 3 is greater than 2, 1. What do we have? 5, 4, 1, double 0. I, I know I'm already greater. So I need small. I need small. So what is my thing? 0, 0, 1, 4, 5. How can you get this? Either you sort this, but you knew one thing. It was always in the increasing order. And if you swap 3 and 1, it will still stay in the increasing order. So if it's an increasing order, you need the reverse now. You need the reverse now, isn't it? So can I say I will reverse? Can I say I'll reverse from here to here? If I reverse, what will happen? If I reverse, what will happen? 0, 0, 1, 4, 5. Because I need as small. Because 2, 3 is already greater than 2, 1. So I can just make it as small as possible. So what I'll say is, can you please reverse the array from the index, like the breakpoint, plus 1, till the last index? This is what you'll say. Please reverse it. And this will complete the third observation part. Can I say once you've done this, you actually have your next permutation? Yes, you do have. And this will be your algorithm. I have also done the dry run with the algorithm. Let's quickly code it up. Make sure you try out the problem from the problem link in the description. So coming back to the code editor, we are given the list 
what was the first thing we did? We figured out. Yes. Let's try from the back. So probably we can just store the size and that's a dot size. And we know we will be starting off from this and we can go on. Let's go ahead. And I know one thing, if array of i is smaller than array of i plus one, that means it's a break. So I go ahead and say, hey, this is my break index and you can break. But if there was no break index, if there was no break index, the given one was the last, the given one was the last. So I'll say reverse. So in C++, we have this function. Again, the Java code will be in the description. Make sure you check it out. And over here, you can just write a return. Quite simple. You end it over here. If it is not, what do you do? From the back, you find out which is the first greater or the least greater element. So let's start from the back again. So I'll say, let's start from the back. And probably I can just go on till the index. And I can go on like this. And if I know a of i is greater than a of index, that means we got someone who's greater. And that's the first guy. I will swap. And if I swap, I will just go off. That's the step two. So what I can say is uh, the second step is also done. What is the third step? You have to reverse. Why? Because see, you have five, four, one, double, zero, but two, three is greater. Now you want this to be as small. So the simple job is you say reverse again in C++, STL is there. Java code is in the description. So you reverse from this particular index till the end. And once you've done this, you can return the array. Now we'll quickly go and run this and see if this is running fine. Should be running fine. So as we can see that this particular code is accepted. Now, if you talk about the time complexity, b go of n plus b go of n and plus b go of n at the worst case. So the time complexity at the worst case will be near about b go of 3n. Will be near about b go of 3n. And yes, you're modifying the array. So if the interviewer says that that is considered in the time uh, space complexity, it will be b go of n. Otherwise, it is big of fun because I am not using any extra space in order to solve this problem. Yes, I'm modifying the array, but I'm not using anything from myself. So coming back to the sheet, I can mark this as done. I hope you have understood the observation, the intuition. Because, see, algorithm, everyone, everyone can just write the algorithm and do the trial. But the thought process, the observation, the intuition, the designing of the algorithm, that is the key. And I hope you have understood it. And it took me like two hours to record this lecture. And it's like 3, 9 a.m. in the morning. So in case, in case you're watching this video till here, please, please do consider giving that like. And if you're new to our channel, please, please do consider uh, giving us a subscribe because 45% of the users who watch our videos do not subscribe. And I understand it's an education channel, so most of the people do not press it. But please do consider pressing that subscribe because it does highly motivate me to make such kind of content. And yes, to continue our tradition, make sure you comment understood as well. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, the links will be in the description. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's finish some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Okay.